My name is George A. Keyworth. I'm from the University of Saskatchewan Department of History, and my research areas are medieval Japanese and Chinese Buddhist texts, and I also study religious history. So what I want to talk about is where secondary production took place uh, in Korea in terms of the production of East Asian Buddhist canons. Now that might sound strange, but when we think about the history of East Asian Buddhist texts, that is China, Korea, and Japan, as well as parts of northern Vietnam, we realize that the Buddhist canon that was printed in Korea during the 13th century forms the basis for all the Buddhist texts that we study and use today. So in order to examine where production of Buddhist texts took place in Korea, uh, specifically, we first think about the first printing of the Korean Buddhist canon, which was a copy of the 983 Song Dynasty Kai Bao era canon. Now, most of this Buddhist canon was lost, uh, and so the best preservation we have of it is in the first Korean canon, but that was lost too. So what we have today is the second Korean canon published during the 13th century. Now, though the entire woodblocks, all of them for 6,000 568 rolls, or juan in Chinese, of over 1,496, almost 1,500 Buddhist texts are preserved today at Heinza Buddhist Monastery. What makes the case of Korea unique is that we do have some instances, some uh, examples of the Buddhist texts from the first Korean canon as well. So, when we try to study and examine the Buddhist canon in Korea, we're thinking about the way in which it follows the order of the scriptures, treatises, monastic codes, and others from a catalog produced during the Tang Dynasty in China, which is the Kaiyuan Shijia Lu. That tells us how many texts should be in the canon, and then we can look at other materials produced independently in Korea. What seems unique in the case of Korea is a, a special attention to scriptures and commentaries of one of the most famous East Asian Buddhist texts. In Chinese, it's called the Hua Yan Jing. In Korean, the Hua Um Gyeong. And then, of course, it was translated from Sanskrit when it was called the Buddha Vatamsaka Sutra. Now, there's one particular collection in Korea called the New Catalog of Teachings of All the Schools. This was produced in Korea in 1090 by the monk Uichan. In this collection, we have the first compilation of texts in one place beyond the Buddhist canon. Today, at Songwangsa Monastery, we have wonderful examples from this collection. From Horim Museum, which is in Seoul, we have, for example, uh, the extant Roll 2 and 75 of the Hua Yanjing or Hua Um Gyeong, as well as roll 82 of the Fa Yan Zhulin in Chinese or Pub Wan Churim in Korean. Both of these were not included in the Tang Dynasty uh, Kaiyuan Shijia Lu catalog, but they were published for the first Korean canon. As I said a minute ago, at Songguangsa, we also have a marvelous sub commentary to the Buddhavatamsaka Sutra, or the Hua Yanjing, or Hua Um Gyeong. What makes this particular very long text special is that it has what we call sutra illustrations, or sometimes we call them transformation tableau, printed with the commentary. This may sound a little bit strange, but it probably suggests that we're looking at ritual or teachings, uh, practices used with this particular text. So here, we have an example of the Pub Wan Churim, or, or the Fa Yun Chulin, from the first publication of the uh, Koryo Canon. And here we have the larger commentary I just mentioned. What makes this special, as you'll see on the right, are the sutra illustrations. And these have the names of the deities discussed in the uh, Hua Yan Jing, or the Avatamsaka Sutra. On the left, what you'll notice is we have an example of one of the owners of this text wrote their name to show you that it was important for them. Uh, we also have beautiful block print edition of the main text and the sub-commentary. 
Now, what makes this very special is it's a Tang Dynasty monk whose name was Cheng Guan, who wrote a commentary. And then during the Northern Song Dynasty in the 11th century, a monk by the name of Jin Shui Jing Yuan wrote a sub commentary. It turns out that this text is almost entirely lost anywhere but in Korea. What is also very special about this commentary is that the donors, those people that produced it, wrote their names in, in the cartouche that you see on the left, and then we also see their names uh, at the end of these particular rolls, or juan, or scrolls. And so to rolls 26 through 30, we have the donors who produced this edition of the text. Overall, what makes this very special is that the only other edition of this text we have is in a uh, Japanese printed edition of materials uh, published in 1912. And there, we're missing rolls 21 through 70. Whereas in the Song Guangsa edition, we have the entire text that is extant. Also, in the uh, Zokuzokyo, or, or Japanese Buddhist canon edition, we don't have any of the sutra illustrations, and we have none of the information about the donors. And then again, the donors' names are carved in the cartouche, and they tell us that this text was published sometime between 1628 and 1644 at Songguangsa. It also tells us that study and probably ritual or ceremonial use of this text was essential all the way up through the 17th century in Korea within the main Sun, sometimes called Zen, following the Japanese pronunciation, tradition of Chogye Buddhism.